What's up, young mathematicians? Today, we're going to talk about solving quadratic equations by taking square roots. So in our last lesson, we learned about solving quadratics by factoring. We're going to look at another method today. Uh, so one way to do that is taking square roots. This method works well when the B value is 0 or when there is a term in the equation that is a perfect square. So some steps for solving a quadratic by taking square roots. Number one, isolate the perfect square. Number two, take the square root of each side. Do not forget that when you take the square root of a number, you get a positive and negative answer. Simplify the radical if there is one and get x by itself. So let's get to it on number one. What do we do to isolate that perfect square? We just need to get that negative 10 to the other side. And we could certainly do that in our head, but I'll write it out this time. We'll add 10, add 10. So the negative 10 and 10 cross out x squared equals 36. So the perfect square term is isolated. We're ready to take the square root of both sides because we want x, not x squared. And the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 36 is plus or minus 6. So there are our two answers. Remember, these are quadratics with a degree of 2, so we should be getting two solutions. Number 2, let's get that negative 10 to the other side, but let's do it in our head. If we add 10, we would get 50 on the right. So 2x squared equals 50. Now to isolate that perfect square, we need to divide both sides by 2. And the 2's go out x squared equals 25, and we are ready to take the square root of each side. The square root of x squared will be x. The square root of 25 is plus or minus 5. All right, looking good. Number three, so now we have a perfect square term that's in parentheses, so we still need to isolate it. We need to get rid of that minus 6, so we will add 6 to both sides, which would give us 36 over on the right. And we have x minus 5 squared equals 36. So the perfect square term is isolated. So we are ready to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of x minus 5 squared is x minus 5. The square root and a square, they undo one another. You could kind of cross them out if you wish. Leaves you with x minus 5. Now on the right we get plus or minus 6. So we are essentially dealing with two equations here, and I'll write them both out. I would love it if you kind of did this in your head, but for the first time, we, we certainly want to see it written out. So we have x minus 5 being equal to the positive 6, or you could have the equation x minus 5 being equal to the negative 6. So you need to get both of those solutions. We'll add 5 to each side, and x could equal 11. And we'll add 5 to both sides here. And x would equal negative 1. So those are our two solutions. It's number 3, 11 and negative 1. All right. <clears throat> number 4. So the first thing we need to do to get this perfect square term isolated is to get rid of that negative 2. So we'll add 2 to both sides. So that takes us to 3 times x plus 7 squared equals 24 when you add 2 to both sides. All right, the perfect square term is not quite isolated. It is multiplied by 3. We will take care of that by dividing both sides by 3. So these 3's, oops, missed it there, cancel out. And x plus 7 squared is equal to 24 over 3, 8. So we're ready to take the square root of each side. The square root of x plus 7 squared is x plus 7. Now the square root of 8, that is plus or minus. Remember back from our simplifying square roots, square roots unit, we could take the square root of 8 and split it into the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. What is the square root of 4? 2. So the square root of 8 is 2 root 2. Plus or minus 2 root 2. So we have... Two solutions there when we subtract 7 from both sides. You can write it out as two equations. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. So 
we have the equation x plus 7 equals positive 2 root 2. And we could subtract 7, subtract 7. So x equals 2 root 2 minus 7. Or you could write negative 7 plus 2 root 2. And then we have the second equation, x plus 7 equals negative 2 root 2. So you subtract 7 from both sides, and you would get x equals negative 2 root 2 minus 7. Seven. Um, now, that is often written kind of as one expression with the plus or minus. So let's say we're at this point again x plus 7 equals plus or minus 2 root 2. In a lot of cases, you'll see the negative 7 subtracted the other side, and you'll see the solution written this way x equals negative 7 plus or minus 2 root 2. All of these are acceptable ways to describe the solution set to that quadratic. So there's a little bit of information about solving quadratics by taking square roots. Have a great day.